Tribe, I become invincible with my 10,000 times bonus from the start. Chapter 161, Crisis A Seamless Large Scale Event At this moment, Li Cheng also inquired about Pearl's progress. Currently, there were quite many players who had completed the Second Lord's Quest, and their military strength had long since been filled to the brim. The lower the grade of their military, the more troops they could recruit every day. As for Pearl, her Third Lord's Quest was about to be completed. Once it was completed, her population limit would soar again. When he thought of this, Li Cheng narrowed his eyes and thought about what to do next. He planned to go to the Kingdom of Kent to solve three things at the same time. The first thing was to go to the Moonlight Temple to meet the Moonlight Goddess. The second thing was to participate in their military training, which was a legendary grade training course. Li Cheng would not let that go. As for the third, it was to resolve the internal strife in the kingdom. Thinking of this, Li Cheng opened his eyes. Initially, things this trip was not as urgent, but the situation on Ella's side was getting worse. Therefore, Li Cheng had to plan carefully. Thinking of this, Li Cheng took out a scroll that was emitting a mysterious light from his backpack. It was the mythical great goddess of Lux trial scroll. As long as he crushed this scroll, he would be able to trigger the monster siege. Since he had nothing important to do today, he crushed the scroll in his hand. Instantly, invisible transparent energy entered Li Cheng's body. In the next moment, the rumbling sound of the system notification rang in his ears. Ding, dong. You've used the mythical great goddess of Lux trial scroll. You've triggered a 10,000 times increase in the difficulty of the monster siege. Ding, dong. World announcement. Divine Dragon Alliance player Netherworld has triggered the most difficult monster siege. He's successfully triggered a large-scale world event, Doomsday Wither. Ding, dong. The large-scale world event, Doomsday Wither, will begin in three hours. All players, please, get ready. Ding, dong. This event is a monster siege with monsters from the Goddess of Darkness, the Goddess of Misfortune, the God of Kobolds, the Demon King Baldin, the Vampire Matriarch, the Goddess of Poison Weight, the Alliance of 69 Evil Gods will attack all the good and neutral camps. Ding, dong, hint. This event is extremely difficult. Please, consider your strength and give up your territories if you aren't strong enough. Entering the main city to take refuge is also a good choice. Ding, dong. Hearing the system's hint, all the players were dumbfounded. Soon, they began to discuss. D asterisk MN, did everyone hear that? A large scale event is starting again. I even thought I heard wrong. I guess I didn't. This is a little illogical. I remember seeing it on the official website. The frequency of large-scale events starting is about once every six months. How did it even start? Hiss, look, it was triggered by Netherworld Boss again. Isn't this too hard? Netherworld Boss is indeed Netherworld Boss. The two large-scale events are almost seamlessly connected. Uh, the system's notification seems to be very scary. The highest difficulty monster siege? Everyone. Are we going to the main city? Hehe, <laughs> are you an idiot? Going to the main city? Forget it, isn't that the same as giving up your own territory? Don't listen to the system's bluff, it's not that difficult at all. It's only been a few days since the server opened, the system has to pay attention to the gameplay, right? What brother above said makes sense, so I won't go to the main city. It's another opportunity to make a huge profit. How can I give it up? The players were all shocked by the sudden appearance of another large-scale event, followed by all kinds of excitement. The two large-scale events were almost seamlessly connected. Not even a day had passed since the end of the event in the Shadow World. The players of the Divine Dragon Alliance had received all kinds of rewards, and their strength had soared. Naturally, they were getting ready to make a big move. Meanwhile, Li Cheng himself was also shocked by the system notification. 
he really did not expect that crushing a mythical level monster siege scroll could actually trigger a world event. At this time, Li Cheng carefully looked at the system notification and frowned. It was the most difficult monster siege. It seemed that the difficulty of this large-scale event would be extremely high. The troops formed by the monster siege were also by the gods of the evil camp who had a grudge against Li Cheng. Led by the goddess of darkness, this siege came directly for him. After thinking for a moment, Li Cheng quickly came to a conclusion. At the current stage, even if all the players gathered together, they would not be able to defend their Tier 2 territories. When he thought of this, Li Cheng sent Pearl a message, telling her to return to the city urgently. At the same time, he saw the chat logs of the players in the Alliance channel. He hesitated for a moment before he sent a message. Alliance Channel Netherworld, this event will be very difficult. I suggest that you all take your troops to the major cities and see refuge. After it's over, you may rebuild your territory. Otherwise, you won't be able to save a single soldier. The moment Li Cheng's message was sent, it instantly caused quite a commotion in the Divine Dragon Alliance. No way, Boss Netherworld, is this event really that difficult? F asterisk CK, is Boss Netherworld asking us to give up our territory? I'm not on Boss Netherworld's side this time. It's absolutely impossible for me to give up my territory. I'm just chuckling. Think about it carefully. Since the start of the game, has Boss Netherworld's predictions ever been wrong? But I'm not willing to give up my territory just like that. That's right, our alliance has super strong buffs. We might be able to defend it. The players were all hesitant. After a week of hard work, they had accumulated a lot of troops. Asking them to give it all up now, no one would be willing. On top of that, those large guilds would not give up their territories just because of Li Cheng's words. What kind of joke was this? They had just exchanged so much money for game currency. If the Lord's Hall was destroyed, all the gold coins would be gone. Therefore, there were not many people in the entire Divine Dragon Alliance who listened to Li Cheng's suggestion. Li Cheng had long expected this result, so he just sneered in response. He had already done what he had to do. As for whether they heeded his advice or not, that was none of his business. Some people were really greedy. Since they were greedy, they had to pay the price for their greed. Chapter 162, Setting Up Facilities, Combat Meeting At this moment, Little Rain and Purple Rose received the news from Li Cheng. After hesitating for a few minutes, Little Rain gritted her teeth and decided to listen to Li Cheng's opinion. She led all her troops to his territory. She happened to be in the Misty Forest and was about to conquer a certain secret realm, so she had enough time. To Little Rain, it was just giving up hundreds of billions of gold coins. If this wave was as terrifying as Li Cheng had said, and she could leave her territory but preserve her strength and level, the 200,000 troops that survived would definitely be more important than hundreds of billions of gold coins. Regarding Little Rain's decision, Li Cheng did not object to her coming to his territory. As for Purple Rose, she was anxious. She quickly sent Li Cheng all kinds of messages. Netherworld, are you sure that the monster siege this time is really difficult? How confident are you? Don't lie to me. Although the Rose Guild was also one of the three big guilds of the Divine Dragon Alliance, it was different from the other two guilds. The Rose Guild was very poor. In reality, they did not have any help from large corporations to inject capital into her nor did she charge any fees for its members. Therefore, the 200 billion that the Rose Guild had exchanged this time was all the savings that Purple Rose had accumulated over the years. She had been frugal for countless years, and once she gave up on her territory, it meant giving up all her resources. All that money, down the drain. Li Cheng knew her situation. He understood her anxiety and explained patiently, Believe me, I'm a hundred percent sure about this. Listen to me, preserving your strength is definitely the best way to earn money, it's the only way. Purple Rose, 
if your vision is restricted by a mere 200 billion gold coins that would be too disappointing. Hearing Li Cheng's words, Purple Rose was shocked. A mere 200 billion gold coins. That was 400 billion dollars in the real world. Ordinary people might not be able to earn that much even if they worked for tens of thousands of years. However, hearing Li Cheng's calm and magical words, Purple Rose was not as angry. She gritted her teeth and said in resolution, OK, I'll believe you just this once. You'll thank your luck for making this decision. After saying this, Li Cheng went back to his own business. Half an hour later, Pearl had already used Rapid March to return. After she came back, Li Cheng closed the city gate. He was ready to set up some defensive facilities. Anyway, he had too many crystals now, and those evil gods' targets were him. Hence, it was safe to be sure. Thinking of this, he took his troops to the underground city, and proceeded to buy a lot of materials from the demon chamber of commerce's immortal Sandy. The divine fragments of the ancient demon god were of no use to him anyway. After that, Li Cheng crazily produced more profound energy cannons. Ding, dong, the legendary profound energy cannon is completed. Ding, dong, the legendary profound energy cannon is completed. Ding, dong. Rumble. As the earth trembled, countless profound energy cannons suddenly appeared on the pure white city walls of Li Cheng's territory. After ten minutes, Li Cheng let out a long sigh of relief. He had set up 900,000 profound energy cannons in one breath, densely covering his city walls. There were almost no gaps. If someone with a fear of density was here, they would probably die on the spot. At this point, the territory had a total of 100,000 frost towers and a million profound energy cannons. Such a defensive lineup was something that even the City of Light could not fight with. At this moment, the system's voice suddenly rang in his ears. Ding, dong, respected Earl Netherworld, please, head to the Church of Light's battle conference room to participate in the high-level meeting of the Legion. Ding, dong. Such a large-scale monster siege was considered a rare sight in a thousand years. The evil forces were usually scattered, so the kind camp was also frightened by the goddess of darkness's actions this time. For some reason, the goddess of darkness suddenly went berserk, but no matter what, the evil forces were causing trouble in the main dimension, so the good camp naturally had to respond. Since the territory's defense facilities were already set up, Li Cheng did not think much about it and directly walked into the portal. The city of light was still filled with holy and peaceful light everywhere. At this time, more players were visiting the city of light to complete various quests. Li Cheng ignored the players and walked into the depths of the church. When he passed where Asilia usually was, he found that Asilia was not there. He did not know where she had gone to, and this made a few players who wanted to exchange for items anxious. Greetings, Earl Netherworld. Outside the conference room, two paladins bowed respectfully to Li Cheng. They looked at Li Cheng with a hint of admiration in their eyes. Li Cheng's reputation was very well known by now. With his current reputation, all the NPCs in the entire Lost Continent had heard of his name. Li Cheng nodded as a response to them before he pushed the door open and entered. In the conference room, there was a large circle of people. All the leaders had arrived. To Li Cheng's surprise, Asilia and two people wearing bishop's clothing were also seated at the table. Li Cheng frowned slightly and checked the information of the two bishops. Archbishop Arundel. Archbishop Mive. When he saw their names, Li Cheng's eyelids twitched. He remembered that they were two ruthless people. In his previous life, the future goddess of darkness would attack the surface of the earth, and the city of light would also be surrounded. At this time, the two bishops were completely boorish. Each of them had a magic staff and would often rush to the front, breaking through the enemy's formation. The two of them were both mythical great existences. Although they were priests, they were also very powerful close combat mages. It was not until later that they ran out of mana. 
It seemed that Archbishop Arundel had used his bell to strangle a legendary grade demon to death. When she saw Li Cheng, Asilia immediately smiled sweetly and waved at him, indicating for him to go over. Li Cheng did not say anything and sat down beside Asilia. Commander Vic nodded to Li Cheng and said, All right, two archbishops and Earl Netherworld has arrived. Everyone's here now. With the two archbishops participating in the meeting, Commander Vic naturally handed over the authority to preside over the meeting. Chapter 163, You Cannot Have a Saintess Who Is In Love Arundel nodded and said, First, it's the City of Light's City Defense. Commander McGrady, how's the City of Light's City Defense? Hearing the Archbishop's words, a commander who was responsible for the city's defense stood up and replied, reporting to the Archbishop, all the paladins in the vicinity are rushing to the nearest main city. When the time comes, the City of Light will have 3.3,685,000 paladins, of which 2.8 billion are high-level soldiers. The city wall in the south is damaged to a certain extent. I've already sent people to repair it. It's estimated that the repair will take two hours. Currently, the city has 7,230 defense towers, of which 800 are legendary grade and 1,500 are epic grade after testing, all of them can be put into use. Currently, the paladins are following the second defense plan and setting up traps around the city. A total of 32,000 high-level traps and 8 million high-level traps have been set up. Commander McGrady said a lot of things, summarizing the city defense information of the City of Light. When Li Cheng heard this news, the corner of his mouth involuntarily twitched. The City of Light was still as terrifying as before. Three billion paladins. This number was enough to make many shrines blush. Moreover, they had limited time to prepare and a large portion of the paladins was unable to return to the City of Light. One had to know that the paladins were scattered in every corner of the Lost Continent. Under the command of Commander Vic, the paladins were sent to the nearest main cities to assist in the defense. The number of paladins returning to the City of Light was probably less than 1 Indiana, 1 The number of defensive buildings was also frighteningly large. Even the Imperial capital of the NPCs definitely did not have such a defensive force. Of course, compared to Li Cheng's territory, such a defensive force was still many times weaker. After listening to McGrady's report, everyone present nodded and waited for the bishop's next words. In fact, from the beginning, no one had ever worried about the safety of the City of Light. The two bishops looked at each other and were silent for a few seconds. Finally, Bishop Mive spoke. I'll leave the defense of the City of Light to you. The only difficult part now is. The 120 villages in the west, 300 villages in the north, and the residents of 26 towns in the east have all come to us for protection. And the number of refugees coming to the City of Light is almost over the limit. What ideas do you have? As soon as Mive finished speaking, the entire conference room fell silent. The leaders had solemn expressions on their faces. The main force of the church had all gone to the east to fight against the undead. They would not be able to return within a short period of time. At this moment, Li Cheng's expression was very calm. He had almost understood what the two bishops meant. Were they not here to count on him? As expected, within a few seconds, Bishop Mive's gaze fell on Li Cheng. He said, Earl Netherworld. We hope that you can take in a portion of the refugees. Hearing this, everyone's gaze fell on Li Cheng. Some of the commanders frowned slightly. Could Earl Netherworld do it? Could a lord that had not even lasted more than seven days help in this matter? One had to know that this monster siege was probably the largest they had encountered in decades. Li Cheng's expression did not change as he said calmly, Bishops, I'm just a puny tier three lord and my territory's only at level 40. I'm very weak. I can't even protect myself. I'm afraid I can't help to take in more refugees. Hearing this, the two bishops' lips twitched. They were a little impressed by Li Cheng's words. Very weak? 
Don't think that we don't know about the epic grade city walls and your countless legendary grade defense facilities. You're telling us that you're weak. At this time, the silent Asilia pouted her lips in dissatisfaction. Just as she was about to say something, Li Cheng suddenly grabbed her hand from under the table and scratched her palm a few times. If he did not stop her at this moment, if she were to spill the beans, how would he be able to openly blackmail a few bishops? Asilia's delicate face instantly turned red when Li Cheng grabbed her palm. The two bishops and Commander Vic exchanged glances when they saw this scene. The Church of Light naturally did not restrict love. Could it be that this count had a special relationship with the Saintess? It was no wonder. With the speed of Earl Netherworld's growth, it was not strange for him to gain the favor of the Saintess. They did not think too much about it. In the end, it was Commander Vic who spoke. Earl Netherworld, this if you have any difficulties, the Church can support you. Hearing this, Li Cheng's eyes lit up. He was waiting for him to say that. He did not expect Vic to be so tactful. Li Cheng thought for a moment before saying, My army's combat ability is relatively strong, but it's very easy for them to get injured. I lack some healing units. At this point, Li Cheng paused for a moment and continued, I hope the church can provide me with some holy light priests. Hearing this, Vic and the two bishops' hearts skipped a beat. They already knew that Li Cheng was asking for too much. However, they had no choice but to help. Vic took a deep breath and asked, How many do you want? Didn't the Saintess just gather a batch of priests for you? Not long ago, Asilia had brought a few thousand priests to Li Cheng. Everyone in the City of Light knew about this. Li Cheng's expression was still the same. He casually said, I'll need two million first. When everyone heard this, the entire hall fell silent. Two million priests? To think that he would say such a thing, he might as well kill them all. At this moment, Asilia spoke up. Earl Netherworld, we really don't have that many. Then, she thought for a moment and said, 500,000. We can at most gather another 500,000 holy light priests for you. Hearing Asilia's words, Vic and the two bishops' hearts immediately threatened to collapse. They covered their faces, looking as if they were about to die. It's over, it's all over, it's all gone. The Saintess had always stood on the church's side, but the Saintess who was in love was no longer part of their family. There was a reason why the church had decided not to let the Saintess participate in the battle conference. Vic and the two bishops wondered if something like this happened in the church a long time ago. Otherwise, why would there be such a rule in the first place? They had also seen that the war was fierce this time around, so they had called Asilia to partake in the meeting. If they had known that this would be the result, they would not have allowed her to participate in the war meeting even if they were beaten to death. After the end of this meeting, the two bishops planned to reinstate the rule that disallowed Saintesses from participating in future war meetings, to remind those in the future that this mistake should not be made again. Chapter 164 People in Disaster, SSS Li Cheng's eyes lit up when he heard Asilia's words. He silently gave her a thumbs up in his heart. Of course, he knew that he was asking for too much. He had been waiting for Vic and the two bishops to bargain with him, but he did not expect that Asilia would be that decisive to agree to his ask. Since Asilia had spoken, he was not someone who did not know what was good for him. He then said with hesitation, All right, five hundred thousand then. It really can't be any less. Although it's less than I expected, I'm still an Earl of the Church. I can only do my best to protect the Church's reputation. As soon as he finished speaking, everyone's veins were exposed and their teeth were chattering, everyone except Asilia of course. 5000000 You think that's too little? Where can you find such a good thing? If it was not for the fact that they had something to ask of Li Cheng, the commanders present would have gone berserk. They could still do it now, and it was all because they were well rested. 
giving Li Cheng 500000, holy light priests had directly emptied their pockets and their hearts were dripping with blood. However, since they had already offered to help, Vic and the two archbishops were too embarrassed to go back on their words. Who asked the saintess to speak up? Commander Vic sighed and said, All right, Earl Netherworld, I hope you treat these priests well. As soon as he finished speaking, Li Cheng heard the system notification. Ding, dong, 500,000 holy light priests have joined your territory. Li Cheng nodded in satisfaction. The abilities of these young priests were very abnormal. These 500,000 could heal an army that was ten times stronger. Since he had received the benefits, Li Cheng then returned to the main topic. He tapped his fingers lightly on the table as he asked, How many refugees are there? Vic thought for a moment and said, There are at least two billion refugees that need to take refuge in your territory. Hearing this, Li Cheng's eyelids twitched. It seemed that many towns and villages had given up on defending themselves. All units on the continent were approaching the main city. No wonder the City of Light could not accommodate them. The number of refugees in the City of Light was probably hundreds of times more than that. The situation was not optimistic. Ding, dong, Commander Vic has given you an emergency SSS class mission, people in disaster. Do you accept? Yes. Li Cheng said. Ding, dong, you've successfully received the SSS class mission, People in Disaster. Hint, during the mission period, you must provide food for the refugees. Correspondingly, the refugees will also participate in the defense of your territory. As the system's voice fell, Li Cheng opened the mission list and looked at the mission information. People in Disaster, SSS. Mission Description, The Largest Monster Siege in the Past Thousand Years is About to Arrive. Commander Vic requests your help to take in some refugees. He has promised to send 500000 Holy Light Priests to your territory. Quest Nature, Only Hidden. Quest Difficulty, Zero. Quest Content, Protect the Refugees as Much as Possible. Quest Reward, Gold Coins. Contribution Points, Reputation Points Hint, you do not need to guarantee the safety of the refugees. Looking at the detailed quest information, Li Cheng was a little dumbfounded. The quest difficulty was actually zero? There was such a good thing? One had to know that there were no civilians in tribe. In other words, these refugees were all combat units. What was even more ridiculous was that Li Cheng had to provide them with food, and he did not need to be responsible for their safety. They were like his workers. If Li Cheng was ruthless, he could even send them all to their deaths. Of course, most of the soldiers were trash and did not have much combat power. However, Li Cheng only had to pay with food to receive 500,000 priests. It could be said that he had made a fortune. Wait. At this moment, a regiment commander spoke. This regiment commander narrowed his eyes slightly and looked at Li Cheng. I apologize if I'm offending you, but I really doubt that Earl Netherworld can defend himself. As the regiment commander's words fell, the atmosphere in the meeting room became quiet. Everyone stared at Li Cheng. Many of them had doubts about Li Cheng's strength, and their leader had spoken up. Li Cheng had become a lord for less than seven days. How strong could he be? Hearing this, Asilia's face darkened. She wanted to say something, but Li Cheng stopped her with a look. He looked at the leader and said, Although my territory is only level 40 and I only have a few hundred thousand soldiers, but I have 100,000 legendary grade defense towers now. I have 1 million legendary grade defense facilities as well as the highest level magic traps, though I have a little too few of those as I only made a few hundred million. Although Li Cheng's tone was very calm, everyone felt their scalps go numb when they heard these words. Cold sweat kept pouring out of their foreheads. 100,000 legendary defense towers. 1,000,000 legendary special defense facilities. Are you kidding me? 
putting everything else aside, just how much energy did 1,000,000 legendary defense facilities need to be activated at the same time? With just a simple calculation, everyone forcefully gulped. This was too ridiculous, completely impossible. However, they had no choice but to believe it. This kind of information could be seen with just a glance. Li Cheng had no need to lie at all. In fact, he could not lie about it. Therefore, other than Vic, the two bishops, and Asilia, everyone was in a mess. The leader, who was being stared at by Li Cheng, lowered his head. He wished he could find a hole to hide in. He did not dare to look Li Cheng in the eye. His heart was filled with regret. What kind of monster did he offend? Was it too late to take the medicine of regret? He simply waited for the moment to pass. The next topic on the agenda was mainly about the defense of the City of Light. Naturally, Li Cheng was not interested, so he got up and left. There was not much to talk about regarding the defense of the City of Light. The housing problem was also quickly resolved. Just as the meeting was about to end, a regiment commander suddenly said, Regiment commander, is there really no problem with Earl Netherworld? Why do I feel that he isn't a devout believer? As soon as he finished speaking, the entire meeting room fell silent once again. Chapter 165, Elven Princess Raya Many of them shared the same thoughts. Although Li Cheng had only been on the Lost Continent for seven days, the changes he brought were not insignificant. At present, Li Cheng's reputation value was ridiculously high. He was almost a household name on the entire continent. Even the gods often mentioned his name. When someone spoke, the others began to discuss. As far as I know, the Earl Netherworld massacred a large number of players from other worlds. This is definitely not something a kind paladin should do. He also had a few evil pieces of equipment on him. I'm afraid that he might have come from some demon god. He traveled to and from the underground world a few times, but his whereabouts and purpose were unknown. No one knows what he was up to. The group leaders expressed their suspicions toward Li Cheng. Meanwhile, Vic and the two bishops looked as if they were deep in thought. It was obvious that they were thinking about their words. When she heard these words, Asilia could not take it any more. She said with dissatisfaction, group leaders, even if Earl Netherworld isn't a devout paladin, he's definitely not an evil person. As the saintess of the Church of Light and despite not having a deep understanding of the world, Asilia was not a fool. During the few days she spent with Li Cheng, she had long noticed that Li Cheng was hiding something from her. However, she was smart enough not to ask him about it. As a saintess, she was extremely sensitive to everyone's hearts, be it good or evil. Li Cheng did not give her the impression that he was a kind person, but he was definitely not an evil person. Commander Vic waved his hand and interrupted their possible quarrel. He said, in any case, what Earl Netherworld's doing is beneficial to light and justice. As for the future, none of us can predict it, so let's not say anything else. Moreover, whether he's an evil person or not, the great god of light will naturally send a divine order. This matter ends here. We're not allowed to discuss anything in private. At this time, Li Cheng had already returned to his own territory. He did not care about the thoughts of the Church of Light. As long as there was insufficient evidence, these paladins would not make a move against him. Li Cheng checked the situation in his territory. All his troops were ready and his heroes looked eager. Soon, countless figures walked out of the portal. They were all refugees from the City of Light. Ding, dong, 9,600,000 Tier 2 human militia have temporarily joined your territory. Ding, dong, 65,800,000 Tier 1 weak human militia have temporarily joined your territory. Ding, dong, ding, dong. 3,200,000 Crown Grade Elven Royal Guards have temporarily joined your territory. Ding, dong. Hearing this prompt, Li Cheng froze for a moment. Elven Royal Guards? He took a closer look. 
those were f asterisking crown soldiers. And the church said they were refugees? Thinking of this, Li Cheng looked toward the portal. In front of the portal, there were some troops that were obviously different from the other units. They were wearing polished golden armor and their bodies were relatively slender. They also had long pointy ears. In their left hands were long spears carved with intricate patterns, while in their right, they held golden shields that were half the height of an average person. They looked very similar to the dark elves. The only difference was that they were all male and they all had fair skin. From their appearance alone, Li Chang deduced that these elves should be sun elves from the elven forest. In fact, elves were divided into many races, and the ones with the most number of people were the sun elves standing in front of him, followed by the moon elves, star elves, sea elves, wing elves, snow elves, and so on. At this time, the elf team slowly dispersed, and a slender figure wearing tight-fitting leather armor walked out. It was an extremely beautiful elven lady, and her cheeks perfectly reflected the elegance and beauty of elves. It was simply a face with flawless features. At this moment, Li Cheng cast a scouting spell and the information about her appeared in front of him. Elven Princess Raya Description, a member of the royal family from the elven forest. She has already become famous thousands of years ago. It is rumored that she is the first member of the royal family among the elves to step into the mythical grade for thousands of years, she has been guarding the safety of the elven forest. Level Grade, Mythical, Tier 9 HP Attack Defense Skills Although the detection spell had given him a series of question marks, Li Cheng's pupils still shrank when he saw the name. Raya, it's actually her. In his previous life, Li Cheng's understanding of Raya was that she would inherit the throne and become the elven empress in a few years. Under her leadership, the huge elven empire seemed to become stronger and more united. At this time, Raya came before Li Cheng and said with a smile, Hello, Earl Netherworld. Li Cheng looked at her almost perfect face and could not help but feel dazzled for a moment. Unlike his few female heroes, Raya's beauty was flawless to the extreme, making people feel as though they were dreaming. It was unrealistic. Li Cheng took a deep breath and asked, Why did the princess come to my territory? To seek refuge. Raya smiled. Li Cheng was speechless. What kind of joke is that? You really came to seek refuge? You're a mythical grade powerhouse, and you brought three million soldiers to seek refuge with a tier three lord? Are you here to amuse me? Thinking of this, Li Cheng raised his eyebrows and said, Are you sure? Of course. Raya nodded in response. Then, all refugees must listen to my command. Please, turn around and walk for 500 meters, then find a place to cool down. Raya's beautiful face instantly froze. If she walked back, it would mean walking through the portal. Not to mention 500 meters, even if it was only 50 meters, she would be able to reach the City of Light. However, Raya quickly revealed a smile to hide her loss of composure and said, Hee hee, Earl Netherworld's really interesting. Li Cheng did not respond to this. He actually did not hate or like the Elven Empire much. These pointy-eared elves were really too xenophobic. They were arrogant, self-contained, and they looked down on the other races of the Lost Continent. Typically, the Elven Empire forbade humans from entering their territory. After the two worlds merged, they still looked at the humans coldly from the sidelines. At this time, Raya was aware of Li Cheng's impatience. She put away the smile on her face and said seriously, Are you interested in becoming my prince consort, Earl Netherworld? Chapter 166, Be My Prince Consort As Raya's voice fell, the entire territory fell silent. Li Cheng was frozen as if he had been struck by lightning. He asked, What did you just say? Lei Lia stared into Li Cheng's eyes and repeated, Are you interested in being my prince consort? If you agree, the entire Elven Empire will become your property. At this moment, the system's notification rang in Li Cheng's ear. Ding, 
Dong, Elven Princess Raya invites you to join the Elven Empire by entering into a marriage contract with her. She promises that you'll become the future ruler of the Elven Empire. Do you agree? Notification If you agree, you'll officially join the Elven Empire. Looking at the system's notification, Li Cheng confirmed that he did not hear wrongly. Even he was a little confused now. What was going on? This elven princess who had been famous for thousands of years was here to propose to him? However, it had to be said that Li Cheng's heart was slightly moved. The elven empire was an existence that spanned tens of thousands of years. The human kingdom had all kinds of iterations, but the elven empire was the only one that had existed since human records began. No one knew exactly how strong they were. Moreover, the elven gods were independent of all the other gods. They were also very united, unlike the human gods. Although there were more human gods, they had been fighting for years and attacking each other. No matter what, the elven empire was still a very strong existence. If Li Cheng could control the entire elven empire, it could be said that he had reached the sky in one step. As the prince consort of the princess, it was not impossible for him to become a god in the future. However, would Li Cheng agree? He was only a little tempted, but this idea was quickly rejected by him. After all, it meant that he would be someone's son-in-law, right? What kind of joke was this? Not to mention Raya's empty proposal, even if she fulfilled her promise, Li Cheng would have to face countless gods. The elven king sounded good, but he was only a king. In fact, he was merely the servant of the countless elven gods and he did not have that much autonomy at all. Moreover, Lillian was squinting her eyes and had already released an extremely dangerous aura toward Raya. Initially, Li Cheng wanted to prod Raya for more information but seeing Lillian's expression, Li Cheng refused immediately. He shook his head and said, I'm sorry, your highness. I have to refuse. As expected hearing Li Cheng's answer, Raya sighed lightly as if she was not surprised by this result. She whispered, is it because my chips aren't enough? Her golden eyes flickered and she said, if you accept, I can guarantee that you and I will become gods in the future and the Elven Empire will forever be ruled by our descendants. Hearing this, Li Cheng fell silent. It was not that he was hesitant. He just could not understand why Raya was so keen to make him her prince consort. Did she know that he had a big bird? Was the Elven princess thirsty? However, he believed that Lillian would not tell anyone about this. Back to the main topic. He could not understand why Raya would make such a suggestion. Li Cheng could see the sincerity in Raya's eyes. His reputation value was very high. It was not impossible for him to join the Elven Empire. However, it was impossible for a princess of an ancient empire to lower her status like this. Thinking of this, Li Cheng shook his head and said, No, Your Highness. I've already promised Lillian that once I'm standing at the top of the world, I'll return to the shadow world with her to live in seclusion. Hearing this, Raya looked at Lillian and then sighed. It seems that I'm still a step late. Raya's golden eyes were a little dim, but soon, her eyes lit up and she asked, Then, can I join you? Li Cheng was stunned. Was she suggesting to join him at the glittering castle? To be honest, Li Cheng really could not understand why Raya would do that. He scratched his face and looked at Raya and asked, Your Highness, did you run away from home? How could I do such a thing? Raya said as she rolled her eyes. Li Cheng thought about it and agreed. Raya was thousands of years old now. She had long passed the age of rebellion. Therefore, Li Cheng could not figure it out. Then, What's the purpose of your proposal? Raya was silent for a moment before saying, This is for the Elven Empire, and also for myself, my lord. After saying that, Raya did not say anything else. She only revealed an exquisite and flawlessly beautiful smile. Hearing this, Li Cheng did not ask any more questions. Everyone had their own secrets. 
if she was not willing to tell him any further, he would not ask about it. No matter what, Raya's arrival did not give him any losses. There were now three million max level crown soldiers, the type whose equipment columns were filled with mythical grade equipment. He would not give up free labor for anything. Thinking of this, Li Chang agreed and let her lead her troops to defend the southern city wall. At this time, Luna, who was settling the refugees, also saw their figures. She muttered in a daze, Elf clan. At this time, Li Chang came to Luna's side and said softly, Do you hate them? I can chase them away. Elves and dark elves were enemies. They had been hostile toward each other for tens of thousands of years. Li Cheng would consider Luna over Raya's words. As long as Luna said something, he would instantly kick the princess out. Luna gently shook her head. When she heard what he said, she smiled at him and said, The goddess often teaches us to live in peace with all races. If the elves don't exclude us, we're willing to be friends with them. Hearing Luna's words, Li Cheng coughed awkwardly. Damn it! As the holy son of Trelafani, he had completely forgotten her teachings. All right. Since Luna had spoken, Li Cheng did not bother about Raya. Instead, he patrolled around his territory. The defenses had been set up everywhere and refugees were constantly being transported over. A few female heroes were also preparing for battle with serious eyes. After about half an hour, the last refugee stepped through the portal, and these refugees were all settled by Li Cheng as he showed them to the south side of the territory. He now had a mythical grade powerhouse like Raya, as well as three million crown troops. It could be said to be impregnable. Chapter 167, Goddess of Darkness, You Have to Hold On Looking at the layout of his territory, Li Cheng felt that there was no need for troops to attack the city this time. More than a million legendary grade defense facilities and the temporal flow of the hourglass had increased his attack speed by ten times. It was so fast that it was frightening. It was absolutely ruthless. Even if a mythical boss came, he could teach it a lesson in minutes. At that moment, Purple Rose and Little Rain came with their troops. The two of them were very close to the City of Light, so they came directly through the portal. Their authority was naturally given by Li Cheng. If they did not have the authority, no one could use the portal. At the same time, there were also some members of the Rose Guild who had come to take refuge. Li Cheng had casually left them in a corner of his territory. With their combat strength, did he expect them to guard the city? They could just be cheerleaders. At this time, everything had been arranged accordingly. Li Cheng closed his eyes and waited for time to pass. Suddenly, he felt waves of terrifying hostility, and in the next moment, the system's voice was heard in his ears. Ding, dong, the god of destruction has blessed the troops of the monster siege this time. All siege troops have received a buff, destructive power. Ding, dong, the goddess of darkness has blessed the troops of the monster siege this time. All siege troops have received a buff, dark descent. Ding, dong, the goddess of misfortune has blessed the troops of the monster siege this time. All siege troops have received a buff, power of misfortune. Ding, dong. A series of notifications from the system rang out for hundreds of times. As long as it was a god from the evil camp, they had all cast their own divine blessing spells on the siege troops. Li Cheng roughly counted. There were about 200 buffs in total from that wave of notifications. Of course, there were strong buffs and weak buffs. Some of them were even weaker than Trella Fanny's. They were here to make up the numbers and stand up for themselves. The strongest of them was naturally the buff from the Goddess of Darkness, which directly increased the attack and defense stats of the siege troops by 500%. In short, with close to 200 buffs, all the attributes of the siege troops had reached a very terrifying level. Before Li Cheng could finish checking, he felt that he was once again enveloped by countless mysterious energy fluctuations. The system's voice rang out once again. Ding, dong, the goddess of luck has blessed you. 
you've also triggered a 10,000 times increase and received the buff, Lucky Strike. Ding, dong, the God of Light has blessed you. You've also triggered a 10,000 times increase and received the buff, Holy War of Light. Ding, dong, the Goddess of Dawn has blessed you. You've also triggered a 10,000 times increase and received the buff, Light of Dawn. Ding, dong, the God of War has blessed you. You've also triggered a 10,000 times increase and received the buff, Battle Frenzy. Ding, dong. The system's voice rang a few hundred more times before it ended and Li Cheng's territory was instantly enveloped by countless powerful forces. Li Cheng took a deep breath. It was the perfect time for the monster siege to attack Li Cheng's territory. With the goddess of darkness's vengeful character, she would naturally not let him go. Once the goddess of darkness took up arms, almost all the gods from the evil camp joined in. Similarly, the gods from the good camp naturally went against them. Hence, the two forces were going against each other on his territory. This time, the monster siege was basically a super war between the good and the evil camp, and each side was practically a battle between hundreds of gods. Li Cheng opened the skill panel and looked at the countless buffs that he had just obtained. The gods of the good camp also had strong and weak buffs. Some buffs were also used to make up the numbers. However, as Li Cheng browsed and looked at the statistics of the buffs, his pupils constricted. Hiss. He sucked in a breath of cold air. Under the 10,000 times amplification system, all buffs became extremely powerful and terrifying. The gods from the good camp, such as the goddess of dawn, had buffs that increased the defense of the army's buildings by 10%, which was increased by 1,000% by the amplification system. The reason why it was not exactly a 10,000 times increase was very simple it was already the highest buff that all gods could give to the believers on the main plane. Such multiple divine spells usually required a lot of divine power. Even for the god of light and the goddess of darkness, there were very few divine spells like this. Li Cheng had finished counting all the blessings he received from all the gods. In this wave alone, 225 gods had sent their blessings. Then Li Cheng looked at the data of the blessing and was a little dumbfounded. He even felt that it was a little too crazy. After triggering the 10,000 times amplification, each god's blessing had increased the damage by 1,000%. In other words, all of Li Cheng's units and buildings had their attack and defense stats increased by 2,250 times. Li Cheng was dumbstruck after making the calculations. A few minutes later, he took a deep breath as he muttered with some worry, Goddess of Darkness you have to hold on, don't be too weak. Hold on for a little longer so make me feel good. At this moment, the system's voice rang again. Ding, dong, the Moonlight Goddess has blessed you. You've also triggered a 10,000 times increase and received the buff, Moonlight Descent. Moonlight Descent Description, A Blessing from the Moonlight Goddess Effect, The area within 30 million yards of the territory is fixed to the state of night. Hint, This buff will automatically disappear after the monster siege ends. After the Moonlight Goddess's buff was received, the sun above Li Cheng's territory instantly disappeared, followed by the cool moonlight pouring down. This buff was a little interesting. If it was anyone else who saw it, they would definitely be puzzled. They would even wonder if the Moonlight Goddess had some serious illness. Vision during the day was good, so it must be known that many monsters would become invisible in the dark. However, who was the Moonlight Goddess? How could she not know these things? That was because she knew Li Cheng had a huge boost in the dark. Seeing this, Li Cheng frowned slightly. This moonlight goddess seemed to know him very well. This was a bit abnormal. It seemed that he had to pay more attention to this in the future. At this time, Trelafani's voice rang within Li Cheng's soul, Do you need me to cast a divine spell? It was funny. As the goddess closest to Li Cheng, he had never enjoyed any of Trelafani's divine spells. Chapter 168, Broken Players Normally, the more divine power buffs one had, 
the better. However, Li Cheng shook his head. He merely smiled and said, no need. Even if the goddess of darkness uses her real body during the siege, I can beat her up with all the buffs I received. You just need to save your strength now. Hearing this, Trelafani replied, well, my strength has recovered quite well. Luna can use my divine power now. After chatting with Trelafani for a while, Li Cheng quickly thought of another goddess who had a good relationship with him. Thinking of this, Li Cheng asked in his heart, Is Ella here? Aren't you going to give me a blessing? Ella's disdainful voice soon rang in Li Cheng's soul, I'm about to die, and you want to drain me of my divine power without a conscience. Li Cheng rolled his eyes and was speechless. Ella's condition was indeed not good, and Li Cheng did not care much about her blessing. He was just asking about Ella's current condition. He did not want to damage the dignity of the phantom goddess and he was only joking with his question. However, at the next moment, the system's voice rang in Li Cheng's ear. Ding, dong, the phantom goddess has blessed you. You've also triggered a 10,000 times increase and received the buff, Phantom Wind. Hearing this, Li Cheng was stunned for a moment. Then, he opened his skill pane to check the blessing. Phantom Wind Description, a blessing from the Phantom Goddess. Effect, dodge rate of all enemies within 300,000 yards of the territory have been reduced by 100%, and they cannot become invisible. Hint, this buff will automatically disappear after the monster siege ends. Looking at the effect of this buff, it was quite useful. With Ella's current state, she probably used all her strength to cast this divine blessing spell. Seeing this, Li Cheng smiled slightly and said gently in his heart, Thank you, Ella. It turned out that Ella, who was deep in the kingdom of God, was hugging her knees and curled up on her throne. Ella raised her head slightly. Don't disappoint me, Li Cheng. I've already placed everything I have on you. Everything was ready. Li Cheng waited for time to pass and a few hours passed quickly. Then, the system's rumbling voice was heard. Ding, dong, world announcement. The monster siege is about to begin. All players, please, get ready. Ding, dong, this event is based on points. Killing the enemy will earn you points. If your territory is still standing after the monster siege, you can redeem the rewards through the system's activity shop. Ding, dong, this event is a special event. After your territory is destroyed, all your resources will disappear but your territory will not be destroyed completely. Your Lord's Hall will be restored to level 1 after the world event ends. Ding, dong, the event has begun. I wish you good luck. As the system's rumbling voice fell, the players were all rubbing their hands together. They stood confidently on their own city walls. Ordinary players had iron city walls, while the elites had steel city walls. The former had a durability of 200,000 while the latter had a durability of 3,000,000. They were very confident now. At least with their current troops, such city walls could be defended for a long time. Meanwhile, the overall progress of the Divine Dragon Alliance had been pretty good, and many players thought that this was a good opportunity to take off. At that moment, Countless pitch-black teleportation portals appeared around the players' territories. The players cast their scouting spells. Then they were dumbfounded. All of them were tier 6 demonic abyss hounds, and their levels were directly maxed out. Then, they hurriedly ordered their troops to attack. Countless arrows flew toward the demonic abyss hounds. Then, a series of zeros jumped out and the players were completely dumbfounded. They were so scared that their faces turned pale as they watched in disbelief. Oh my god! What level are these monsters? Why can't I see their attributes? F asterisk CK, brothers, my tier 3 soldiers can't break through their defenses at all. What should we do? Come online, it's urgent. It's over, it's over. What kind of F asterisking monster is this? Does the system know this doesn't make sense? 
it's only been seven days since the server opened, and they're already asking us to deal with such a strong monster. Who the F asterisk CK can withstand this? F asterisk CK, help. Help me. Woo woo woo, it's so scary. The event had only started for three seconds, and countless system notifications started popping up. Ding, dong. Player Cabbage Tofu Soup's territory has been destroyed during the monster siege. All resources have disappeared. Ding, dong. Player's territory has been destroyed during the siege. All resources have disappeared. Ding, dong. Player's territory has been destroyed during the siege. All resources have disappeared. Ding, dong. All of a sudden, the system notifications flooded the screen. All of their territories had been destroyed. The players cried out in pain. Their troops could not break through the enemy's defense at all. Even if they did, they could only focus on killing one or two monsters. Unfortunately, the number of monsters pouring in was overwhelming about hundreds of times more than the number of players. The few players from the Divine Dragon Alliance who listened to Li Cheng's suggestion were watching the live broadcast on the forum with lingering fear. Every player's territory was filled with darkness, the demon hounds were overwhelming as they surrounded their territories. Moreover, the destruction of their territories was secondary. What was more terrifying was that after the players died, they would not be reborn in the ruins of the Lord's Hall. They would die and continue to be reborn until their levels were completely depleted. Seeing this scene, they rejoiced, one after another. F asterisk CK, isn't this too ruthless? Every F asterisking territory has at least a few million demons. I didn't expect the system to release this kind of event. It's a good thing I listened to Netherworld boss. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to defend against even 100 of these monsters. That's right. Although our territories were destroyed, our troops have been preserved. When the event is over, we'll be, among the best. Ha ha ha, let's not say anything else. There's never a mistake if we listen to Netherworld Boss. I really want to see the faces of those people who kept doubting Netherworld Boss. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I can only say that I'm happy to hear it. Chapter 169 this is too difficult. At that moment, countless dark portals appeared around Li Cheng's territory, and in the next, countless ugly black figures walked out. In front of him was an army of hellhounds. They all had long horns that made them look like sheep. Their mouths were faintly emitting dark light. Some of the hellhounds even had a few heads. As Little Rain and Purple Rose looked at the endless army of monsters, their delicate bodies trembled. They looked at each other and saw that they were lucky. The attributes of these demonic hounds were too terrifying. Even if they defended themselves, they would still suffer heavy losses, and this was only the first wave of monsters. Li Cheng was too familiar with these monsters. They were the vanguard of the demons. In the later stages of the game, these monsters were just cannon fodder. However, in the current seven days of the game, they had become a nightmare for the players. Their physical damage and magic resistance were very high. What was worse was that they were both long-range and close-range soldiers that could also take care of each other, and they shot energy attacks from their mouths to attack the enemy. Most of the players thought that these were close-range soldiers. In the end, once they fought with them, they were caught off guard. Moreover, the monsters in Li Cheng's territory were different from the monsters who attacked the ordinary players. His troops had countless buffs under their feet, and with the support of countless gods, they dared to fight even with the crown soldiers. Of course, to Li Cheng, no matter how many buffs they had, the enemies were just cannon fodder. Thinking of this, Li Cheng lightly snapped his fingers. In the next moment, countless frost towers suddenly began to operate. In an instant, azure energy shot out from the frost towers. At the same time, turbulent energy slowly gathered in the dark barrels of the profound energy cannons. In less than a second, the defensive facilities launched an attack. Boom! 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 Then, 
the system notifications rang in Li Cheng's ears. Ding, dong, you've killed a thousand tier 6 hellhounds and obtained 60 experience points and 6 activity points. Ding, dong, you've killed a thousand tier 6 hellhounds and obtained 60 experience points and 6 activity points. Ding, dong. Ding, dong, you've triggered a 10,000 times increase and obtained 600,000 experience points and 60,000 activity points. Ding, dong, you've triggered a 10,000 times increase and obtained 600,000 experience points and 60,000 activity points. Ding, dong. Ding, dong, your experience points are full. Please, complete the trial quest as soon as possible. Ding. Dong. The bodies of the hellhounds fell right in front of the portals. They were barely able to take a single step out of the portals when countless shells exploded in their faces as violent light illuminated them. Li Cheng was naturally not surprised by this. What surprised him was that his points had increased by 10,000 times. After all, this was a large-scale world event. The event shop would not be inferior to the one in the shadow world. More importantly, there was no competitor this time. Li Cheng was certain that no player could survive such a monster siege. The event shop could only be opened by surviving players. In other words, this event shop was his alone. After Cheng Li's approval, some members of the Rose Guild turned on the live broadcast function. The other players could see Li Cheng's situation through the live broadcast room and they were all dumbfounded. Isn't this too strong? F asterisk CK, Netherworld boss, this is too ridiculous. He blocked the portals. Hiss, may I ask what kind of defense tower is this? Which secret realm did he find that from? I want it, too. Stop daydreaming, that's at least a diamond grade defense tower. How would you even get it? This is definitely not a diamond grade defense tower. Someone from the Universe Alliance had also turned on the live broadcast on their side. They had diamond grade defense towers over there, and in front of the monster siege, they were as fragile as paper. Eh, isn't that little rain and purple rose? How did they end up in Netherworld's territory? At that time, little rain and purple rose were also stunned. Their mouths were agape, their faces filled with disbelief. These defense towers, were they not too ridiculous? Their attack frequency was frighteningly high, and so was their attack power, which brought AoE damage. Moreover, it had an extremely terrifying speed reduction effect. The hellhounds that were attacked were instantly killed and a thick layer of frost remained on their corpses. Similarly, the players from the Rose Guild also widened their eyes. Is this really Netherworld's strength? No wonder Peerless Prideful could not break through his territory. I can't see the attributes of these defense towers. I'm afraid that their attack power is over 10,000. I'm sorry, Big Sis. I was still doubting you before. Now, I know how wise you are. Yet, to be able to give up your territory like that, Big Sister's boldness is simply unparalleled. I'm not worried about these things. What I want to ask is when will Big Sister marry Netherworld boss? Oh, ho, ho. Same question, same question. Hearing their discussion, Purple Rose glared at them fiercely. Everyone shrank their necks and quieted down. At the southern city wall of the territory, the Golden Elves were filled with murderous intent. Raya's golden eyes were sparkling. 100,000 legendary defense towers, and... Her eyes paused on the cannons that were full of dark technology. She said in surprise, the profound empire's energy cannons. The history of the elven empire was longer than that of the profound empire. They had established diplomatic relations with each other in the past, so she had seen these cannons before. There's a million of them the amount of energy required to activate them at the same time is an astronomical figure. After doing some simple calculations, Raya's heart was even more shocked. Her bright eyes were fixed on Li Cheng's figure as she unconsciously muttered Li Cheng's name, Netherworld. Even if the hellhounds were at their maximum level, 
they would still be instantly killed under the attack of his legendary defense towers. Soon, all the Hellhound's health bars disappeared and they fell, one after another. At this time, the system's voice finally stopped. Then, a row of eye-catching information appeared in everyone's line of sight. Current surviving players in their territory, 9. Seeing this number, all the players sucked in a breath of cold air. There were nearly 100 billion people in the world, and nearly 80% of them had entered tribe. Yet, only 9 people had survived? This monster siege was way too difficult. Chapter 170, Who is the Real Devil? Looking at the number of players left, all the players had a question in their minds. Was this really the difficulty of a game that had only started seven days ago? Seeing this number, even Li Cheng was slightly surprised. Unlike the others, he was shocked that there were actually people who could survive the monster siege. It seemed that some of the lucky ones had quite a good history. However, Li Cheng was sure that these people would definitely die after the second wave of the monster siege. When he thought of this, the system's voice rang in the ears of all the players. Ding, dong, the second wave of monsters will attack soon. Everyone, please, get ready. After the system's voice fell, a dark horde of monsters once again appeared from the teleportation gate. This time, it was not just the demon hounds. Behind them, there were countless tall abyssal demons. They were tier 7 soldiers and they were considered very powerful. In the sky, countless shriveled up ugly figures appeared. They were pitch black gargoyles, tier 8 flying soldiers. In his previous life, players called them the sky ghosts. These gargoyles were the most difficult to deal with. The reason for that was very simple they possessed an invincible skill. When their HP fell below 10%, they could turn into stone statues that had 99,999 physical defense and 99% magic resistance for all types of spells. On top of that, after 30 seconds, their HP would be replenished to its full value. This skill could be said to be extremely disgusting. However, it was completely meaningless in front of Li Cheng. They were a type of soldiers that had high attack and low defense stats. In front of legendary grade defensive facilities, they would only be insta-killed. At that moment, countless pitch black gargoyles let out extremely strange, ear-piercing sounds. Then, they flapped their wings and charged toward Li Cheng's territory. At the same time, the defensive facilities within his territory also began to attack. Boom. 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 There were multiple earth-shattering explosions in an instant. Li Cheng was not afraid of wasting resources. All of his profound energy cannons were firing at full power, causing azure orbs of light to explode in the air. In the pitch-black night, the horizon was extremely bright, illuminated by cannon fires. At the same time, the system's voice rang in Li Cheng's ears once again. Ding, dong. You've killed a thousand tier 8 pitch black gargoyles and obtained 800 experience points and 8 activity points. Ding, dong. You've killed a thousand tier 8 pitch black gargoyles and obtained 800 experience points and 8 activity points. If you have problems with this website, please continue reading your novel on our new website myboxnovel.com thanks. Ding, dong. Ding, dong. You've triggered a 10,000 times increase and obtained 800,000 experience points and 80,000 activity points. Ding, dong. Similar to the first wave of monsters, the second wave of monsters was blasted into smithereens as soon as they appeared. They did not leave their ashes behind since they did not even take a step out of the portal. Five minutes had passed when the portal finally closed. There were no more monsters. At that moment, the number in Li Cheng's vision became unusually eye-catching. Current surviving players in their territory, 1. Upon seeing this information, all the players' pupils constricted. Li Cheng was the only one left in the world. One had to know that it was only the second wave of monsters attacking the city. According to the nature of online games, there were at least a few dozen waves after that. F asterisk CK, 
what kind of event is this? It's only been 10 f asterisking minutes and all the players have been wiped out. Are you blind? Netherworld boss's territory is still fine. This is too ridiculous could the officials be using our gold coins for this? Don't tell me that's really possible. I hate it so much. Why didn't I listen to Netherworld boss? Now, my territory is gone, my resources are gone, my troops are gone, and all my levels are gone. Most of the people who saw Li Cheng's effort to dissuade them regretted not listening to him in the first place. The current players had been killed hundreds of times by countless monsters. They would die as soon as they were resurrected. Their levels had long dropped back to level 1, and all their resources, troops, and buildings had disappeared. In other words, all their hard work over the past seven days was gone. Only a small number of players who had listened to Li Cheng's suggestion were overjoyed. Their territories had been broken through, but their troops were still there and they could become the leading players in the Divine Dragon Alliance in a matter of minutes. They could even take off in one wave and become the winners of life. The Rose Guild had benefited the most from this. Purple Rose could only rejoice at the fact that she had trusted Li Cheng. Her gaze was fixed on Li Cheng's back, and for a moment, she was lost in thought. At the same time, her curiosity toward Li Cheng grew even stronger. She wanted to know how many secrets this man had. Defending his territory was within Li Cheng's expectations. He did not think that an enemy could take a step out of the teleportation gate, what with his terrifying defensive abilities. Unless the enemy sent out their crown troops, and there were probably many of them. However, the army formed by many evil gods was also suspicious. Usually, they would not be willing to cooperate at all. At most, they would send out some legendary troops. Time flew by. After more than three hours, the 90th wave of the monster siege ended very quickly. Countless huge, bloody corpses fell near the portal as dark green blood spewed from their dead bodies. They were formed by the Church of Poison's research of the undead. It was similar to the hatred, soldiers formed by the stitching of many kinds of monsters. They were level 10 meat shield soldiers that had very strong combat strength. Under Li Cheng's powerful firepower, however, they were instantly reduced to dust. At this moment, everyone's gaze turned to Li Cheng. They were completely numb. The 90 waves of monsters were all blocked, dying outside the portal. They could not even take a step forward into his territory. As long as their heads popped out of the portal, they would be instantly killed, no exceptions. What the f asterisk ck, are we really playing the same game? Why is there such a big difference between us? I'll still say it. This netherworld's definitely cheating. Tier 10 max level meat shield soldiers, super powerful legendary soldiers at that, and they were actually killed in an instant. F asterisk CK, who knows where I should go to report this. I'm going to report that the Divine Dragon Alliance is cheating. F asterisk CK demons, come on, let's kill Netherworld. At that moment, in a narrow underground space, countless pitch black figures were staring at the scene in front of them under the pitch black light. How's this possible? Those are max level legendary soldiers. Do we have to deploy crown soldiers instead? Those are at least epic grade defense towers. This is too terrifying. How the hell are we going to fight him? I'd rather fight the City of Light. This netherworld, who the hell is he? I really don't know what to do with this.